and welcome to Recovery Uncovered. RISE Recovery's mission is to help teens, young adults, and families overcome the effects of drugs and alcohol and partner with the community in education and prevention. B, who do we have today? Hey, Danya. <laughs> well, today we are blessed to have Amber. Amber, you know, I'll, hey, Amber, I always have, uh, when I'm saying your last name, like my it rolls on my off my tongue a little so i don't want to like mess it up or anything but it's is it Ma mazur mazur it's mazur mazur right. see yeah. i'm like making it french or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know everyone thinks it is but yeah um, it's simple it's simple mazur okay awesome well we have amber with us today danya and uh i'm really looking forward for her just to you know just kind of share um with our rise family right the ones who i know watch us on on facebook and, <laughs> and other places. just a little bit you know of her experience and 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 what it was like um for you amber um coming through here coming to rise and and being a part of this uh great organization hi amber um yeah so i came here when i was like uh probably like 14 um, so Rise would come to my school, um, High School, and so we'd have meetings there, um, and couple counselors, and so every week I would go to their Thursday meetings at the school, um, and I mean, I liked it because I could get out of school or get out of class, like, with an excuse, but, um, you know, since I was, I started going, I think, freshman year of high school, um, all the way till when I was a senior, like, I started, you know, hearing more about it and hearing more about recovery. Um, so it was like, it was like in my head and I, you know, I couldn't get that out. So, um, I, <laughs> and I, you know, I was a drug addict, I still am. And so it's like, I knew where to go and I knew who to talk to and I yeah. How recovery like worked already um, so I wasn't really that scared when you know I wanted to get help so like um, I started going to the meetings outside of school um, activities you know having fun and I don't know I always like we had um, us like a sober crew at our high school <laughs> <laughs> and it was you know it was because of rise and um, I don't know, like, I always, like, there was, like, I, I felt very on and off about them. I was, like, it's so cool that they're, like, all friends with each other. Because um, it was, like, it was a pretty large group of them. And then at the same time, I was just, like, you know, F that. Like, I, you know, I used to get high with those people. And now they're, like, not talking to me or whatever. So, um, I don't know. But a part of me thought it was really cool. And a part of me really wanted to be a part of it. Um, so when I was a senior in high school I think that's when I like I really started like realizing um that you know it was affecting my life like it was affecting like my college my school I stopped going to school and like I stopped really wanting to go to college and I stopped really having that motivation to like do everything I wanted to do for college um and like what my job wanted to be and so I would get in fights with my parents all the time and it was like it was constant like I felt like I was like trapped and I like I was just couldn't like stop getting in trouble and you know I felt like I was going nowhere um and then you know I got arrested when I was a senior and um I had to go to the alternative school um and I was still kind of going to rise at this point um definitely getting arrested like after that my family was like oh wow um you know like there's a problem <laughs> yeah, there's a problem you know like they didn't really i don't really think they wanted to know how much of a problem it was but then yeah. when that happened they were just like wow um because at the same time that that was happening i was like living out of my car but i was telling them i was living at like other friends houses so then they figured that out too and you know it was just like they were all very worried about me um and 
when I was in jail, you know, like I saw like um, like heroin addicts like withdrawing and that was really scary to me. Um, <laughs> that is not something yeah. that like you want to ever see. Um, and it was just like definitely an eye opener. Um, after that, I was like, well, I, I kind of want to go to rehab now. Um, and I planned on going to rehab for a while. Um, and mainly <laughs> because I had no place to stay. And I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, there, there'll be a bed there, you know? I don't Not have to work. It's necessary. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. it would be that way. <laughs> I don't have to work. I don't have to worry about anything. Um, but I didn't end up going. Um, my dad let me move back home with him. And then, uh, I don't know, when that happened, I even spiraled more. And I made friends when I was at Rise, uh, like in high school and everything. I had some really close friends of mine that I would talk to every once, like every so often. Um, and I hung out with them this one day. It's probably like a few months after I got arrested. It was after I graduated high school. Um, and I think they could just tell that like, after everything, like it was like the point where like, I was just like, I was just very vulnerable. And, um, you know, they, they reached out to me and like said that they were worried about me and basically said like, you should try it. And for some reason, I like this, it was the only time I like really felt that way. Like I really felt like someone was like worrying about me, um, even though I probably have been told that multiple times before. But this time really like it was just like the right time, the right moment. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And um, I was I've been sober ever since. But like without going to rise and having those people there, um, I mean, the guy that I was talking to that like told me he was worried about me, he has been he was sober for like a year. So, um, you know, the, that he was one of the mo main people that helped me get sober. Um, and, you know, after that, like, he I, he answered, like, all my questions I had about sobriety, you know, like, the whole God thing was a huge thing for me, or I thought it was, I don't know, I think I was kind of making excuses, but, um, yeah, like, I had that, like, backbone to lean off of, and I, that's what I really, really liked the most about Rise Recovery, was being able to find friends like that, and then having them there when I needed them. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that's so important. That is, I kind of want to just touch back on um, something you had said earlier, uh, uh, Amber. You, you mentioned that like you're going to like the little groups and so forth like that. But and what I heard or what I gathered from is like, yeah, even though like at that time, like um, you were going to the groups, I guess, in, in school in, in high school. And at that time, you really wasn't ready to get sober, but it was still was like planting a seed, you know? And yeah. like, and when the time came, it's like, okay, you knew what, where, where you can get help from, yeah. you know? And I think that right there is really, really big. Sometimes we, we can't see that at the time, right? You know, but we get this seed that's planted. And then later on when it's time, it, it can definitely grow. So, yeah. wow, you, you are a testament and a testimony. Yeah. I mean, I think like the younger you learn about it, um, it's better because I know a lot of people that are in their 20s that, you know, have never really heard about addiction, don't know anything about AA, but they're like, they're convinced that it's like this awful place and that it's not for them and that it's like a bunch of drug addicts and like homeless people. But like, I feel like since I knew at such a young age and that like a bunch of my friends went to those meetings, yeah. like, I didn't really look at it like that. It was kind of normalized for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of brought into your life. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, awesome. Great. I, I do want to say one more thing, Amber. If there's something that you could tell um, a, a new person coming in, what would it be? Um, <laughs> um, it, like, a, if you're a new person, you're coming in to rise. I mean, I really would say go to the activities. Um, I think going to the act, that's where I found my friends like the lock-in. That's <laughs> where I really made like, <laughs> I mean, it is, it's true. I think fellowship is the main like helping point, you know? I mean, you got meetings and everything, but if you have fellowship, it makes it just so much easier. 
So yeah, I say going going to activities, having fun. Yeah. Getting those connections, those social connections. Yeah. Awesome. Have yeah. fun. Thank you, Amber. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm so know. glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here and you're you're working with us. Yeah. 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 Can't wait. Thank you guys for having me yeah, on our I podcast. It. This is so cool. I really yeah. wanted to get you on here, so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And you'll be coming back, by the way. Yes. Okay, okay. Ready. I love your frogs, Danya. <laughs> Thank you. I love that. That is so awesome. All right, you want you want to tell them? Um, yes. You tell them a little bit about how we can help. Yes. If anybody knows someone or needs help yourself, please call 210-227-2634. Or you can email us at info at riserecovery.org. And remember, we help the whole family. So please get a hold of us, if, even if you think you need help. OK? Right. And thank, thank you, you, guys. That's great. Bye. Bye.